Joseph Rothschild here with the sixth and final round of the fourth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. And boy, do I have a matchup for all of you, chat. We have avoided Adamancipator and Eldritch, despite the fact that a significant amount of people are not only playing it, but doing extremely well with the deck. Um, I'm just going to real quick give you an overview of who is in metagame contention. Uh, Lundrity and CyberVX, so that's Jason Leonard, have both uh, autoed in. Uh, there is absolutely no way they are going to be bumped from top eight. Um, extremely good players, uh, etc. Provided any X2s get in, uh, based lowly will also be uh, in top cut. Dunkoro uh, as well has a shot of doing so even if they drop this game. Uh, though likely both of those players will have to win to guarantee a spot. Um, however, <laughs> the matchup we have is between the two lowest ranking X1s. So whoever wins this game will likely get into top cut, and whoever loses this game will 100% not. Uh, we've got both Rick Hape, uh, who is playing at Emancipator uh, in name only. In reality, it is Gem Knight FTK versus... Yaku Man, our round three feature on World Legacy Scars Turbo. So, <laughs> if there were ever any two decks that are playing meta with a twist that makes it much, much worse, it is these two. And I'm so excited to see how little Yu-Gi-Oh! the pair of these can play. So, chat, voice your support now, either for Scars Turbo or for Solid Rocks Brother. One of these two is walking into top eight and the other is walking home. <laughs> Uh, I, I simultaneously want them both to make top cut and want neither of them anywhere near, uh, top eight. Alright, so the game is in, in play right now. Let me just move this down a little bit so that I don't lose my mind looking at it. Okay, so, uh, a lot depends on the die roll clearly, and it looks like the Gem Knight player has won it. Uh, so, uh, we're gonna lead with a normal summon Crystal Rose, and that's a rock, so we'll be able to special summon a copy of Adam Emancipator Researcher and go off to the races. Let's see what we find. Oh, that was pretty bad. A couple of vanillas, but it will do. Um, we're gonna go for Gem Knight Lapis here. Uh, Lapis is going to, uh, likely just be used for, uh, Phantom Quartz, I'd expect. Oh, I don't think we can even make Phantom Quartz. We have no other gem monster. 60 cards in this build, by the way. Should all fusion says this is FTK? Oh, so you think. All right, Seeker time. Let's activate Seeker's effect. Dotscaper, the other Lapis, Obsidian. Ooh, and Potetting Sisur. Well, one of those will be summoned to the field for sure, and that's enough to make Phantom Quartz, I believe. So this is just about the best thing you could reveal. Gem Knight Lazuli, when, it's go when it goes to the graveyard, allows you to add a normal monster uh, to your hand. If you have a Nibiru, now is the time. Let's see the main deck Nibiru. A Nibiru would do it. Nibiru would end the turn here. And this is your last opportunity to make it, by the way. I think. Looks like there isn't a Nibiru activation, so our cape is now thinking. Uh, chat is correct. I believe this is an FTK. <laughs> you can skip it. Just go next. No, thanks. This is not Stevie Blunder. Uh, so, uh, there is actually a chance that they'll win this game, is what I'm trying to say. We're gonna go to Cross Sheep, and then, uh, Link Spider. We're going to activate the effect of Crystal Rose on field, uh, to send a Lazuli. You can see that we already have a Lapis in the graveyard, so we'll be able to add that back. And then we'll be able to Link Summon Gem Knight Phantom Quartz, a monster that is featured in a significant amount of my nightmares. When this card is Link Summoned, you can add a Gem Knight card from your deck to the hand. Not a monster, so you can get Gem Knight Fusion. Then you can pay a thousand life points to fusion a Gem Knight Fusion monster from your extra by shuffling fusion monsters in your possession that are banished or in the graveyard. So if you're able to banish a bunch of Gem Knight monsters by some effect, like, say, some kind of block dragon, you can use them as material. We're going to Curious here to send Block Dragon. Oh, isn't that quaint? Remember when we had to Curious for Block Dragon? Now we can Gallant Granite or Union Carrier into it. Why is Stevie not playing? Stevie did play, and unfortunately was beaten by the Goki player in the second to last round. Now banishing the Dotscaper triggers it, so it will come to the field. And next we will go into Appaloosa. This is an Appaloosa for two, and we'll turn off hand traps for the remainder remainder of the turn. And 
I mean, that's going to be the end of the game. We're getting double obsidian and crystal rose here. <laughs> Chat completely correct. Oh, great. Block dragon. It's always block dragon with these decks. That card, by the way, not long for this world. We're going to go gem knight fusion uh, to send... Looks like Tourmaline and Crystal Rose to get a copy of Seraphonite. You don't usually see this card hard fusioned. Back in the day, you would use Brilliant Fusion for this one. But it's going to net us an extra normal summon, which will come in handy. Can we get deck lists? You will get deck lists for everyone in top 8. We're going to activate Gem Knight Fusion again. And because we've sent this copy of Obsidian from the Hand of the Graveyard, we can Special Summon a Normal as well. That is five monsters on board, and Lapis Lazuli is going to dome for a cool 2,500 points of damage minimum. Looks like we're not done yet, though. Let's go into a Phantom Quartz. And we can banish whatever we like from the graveyard using a block dragon. Love that that condition isn't once per turn. By banishing a fusion here for Crystal Rose, we open up the uh, extra deck even further. We can use Crystal Rose's effect. Fun fact, not a once per turn. In order to send a Lazuli to the graveyard, another card that would be uh, benefited from an OPT errata. And then we're going to activate the effect of uh, Gem Knight Fusion. You know what I love is that Gem Knight Fusion doesn't banish the cards. Uh, because if it did, you would just be able to use Phantom Quartz to then use the cards that you banish off Gem Knight Fusion as material. And that would be degenerate. Alright, so we're going to go into Gem Knight Master Diamond. Of course, an incredibly powerful card. This is going to make Lady Lapis Lazuli hit like a truck for 3,000 damage, sending a Lady Lapis Lazuli. Master Diamond, the individual who is currently limited, he's going to copy Lady Lapis Lazuli and then burn for another 3k. And where's the other two coming from? Chat, can you figure it out? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> it involves Verte Anaconda. So we're going to activate Gem Knight Fusion here, and I believe we have one Lapis Lazuli remaining. Uh, we're going to go into Zirconia first. That was Master Diamond and Lapis to do that. And then we'll activate Verte Anaconda, paying 2,000 to send a copy of D-Fusion to the graveyard. <laughs> that brings back Gem Knight Master Diamond, and uh, oh boy, that's I think the third copy of Lady Lapis Lazuli we need. Do we have a lady in graveyard? Yep, we'll banish that lady and uh, then burn for the final 3k. What a miserable combo. All right, so that's going to be a quick game one win for Rykape, and we might actually see this deck make it into top cut. I would, I don't know how I'd feel about that. I'd certainly avoid the feature match like the plague. Yeah, but that was that was all off of just normal Ad Emancipator effects. You know, one of the things that was holding Gem Knight FTK back is that it didn't have access to like. Uh, repeatable ways to special summon without access to, like, uh, Gem Knight Fusion. And, uh, boy, you know what resolved that was the Ad Emancipators. Also, really good way to get Block Dragon into the graveyard. That's Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> no Needle Fiber, no Union Hanger, no Gallant Granite. Just using the Ad Emancipators as special summon engines. Yeah, Chad is absolutely right. It's time for the Scars Payback. You FTK'd? I'll show you an FTK! <laughs> I actually think, obviously, Gem Knight is not going to be able to play through uh, Scars if the turn one combo sets it up. This is, I mean, so explain to me how good this format is. You're either making an unbreakable board with that Emancipator or enough negates with Eldritch that you can't possibly be beat, or this is the, the obvious next step in the evolution. You start FTKing with Mech Knight and... <laughs> Mech Knight and uh, Gem Knight. We're, we're seeing World Legacy Scars. Here we go. Uh, Indigo Eclipse to the Graveyard. If we have a way to make a zone, we might actually be able to do the combo. Nope. Unfortunately, we do not. And it's going to be the end phase. Oof. That's got to be a piece of interaction or we are in trouble. Magical Midbreaker Field. Awesome. Really cool. So this card can only be activated at the start of your main phase one. And if it is activated, monsters on the field can be destroyed or targeted by your opponent's uh, cards during the first main phase. So we've opened that and Rabbit. Rabbit's going to be able to summon a couple of uh, Gem Knight Lapises to the board and summon limit! Whoa, that's a rough one. Okay, you're going to need exactly... Uh, I don't know, a Red Reboot, Cosmic Cyclone, and that's going to be a pass and a destruction. Oh, no. So no zones for Mech Knights. Uh, potentially the ability to cycle with Scars. It looks like we are going for that, discarding a green. You need a ding here pretty badly, folks. 
Uh, gonna set a card. I think we're likely to see another pass, but like, how is Gem Knight possibly going to play under Summon Limit? I feel like there's literally no way for that to happen. Toxic Floodgates. Toxic, toxic, toxic after getting FTK'd. Wine, wine, wine. All FTK players know is activate Lapis Lazuli, eat hot chip, and lose on stream. <laughs> Aquamarine can bounce a card. Okay, that's the out, folks. This is peak Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reiki pretty deep in the tank for someone who's under summon limit. <sighs> if I use my summons just like so, I can pass on two monsters and make Phoenix next turn. <laughs> So, like, Crystal Rose is fine here, but unless you have a good way to get uh, the Summon Limit off the field, it's only going to be giving your opponent zones, which is a little scary. It's Gearsu, you plebeian. I'm gonna call it Lil Ding. There's nothing you can do. Whoa! Those are two really hot summons. Uh, Block Dragon and Crystal Rose. No way to get them off the field, but uh, they occupy the wrong zones for the Mech Knight player, and uh, I don't know. This is looking okay. Even if Mech wins this game, they have to draw specifically Nibiru to win game three. The 60-card Gem Knight deck is capable of bricking. I know that you feel as if it isn't, but the 60-card Gem Knight deck, I promise you, has the capacity to brick or fold to individual hand traps like Ash Blossom. All right, we're going to do it again. Ugh, discarding a hand. Jeez. We're almost going to get there just by activating Scar's effect, I think. Set another card. Do we have a Mech Knight at least? We do! Purple Nightfall's a great one. So that gets over uh, everything and... <laughs> oh! Oh! God! Alright, so that's an Avram and that's a future glow! Oh, Rykip's only at 5,000! Oh no, that's um... Uh, the, the health bars are reversed. It's significantly more than that. We are going to walk over everything. That's going to put three monsters in the hand, but... What what is the purpose of future glow? I I don't understand. Note its level. That's a fantastic fantastic phrasing on this card. All right, so we've got absolutely everything we want from the Gemini player of the board except for removal for the summon limit. You can add back the card you banish off of key. Adorable. Big number. Ah, I see. Big number. Yeah. Well, big number. I mean, I can't I can't argue with big number. I mean, those big numbers really came in handy. He doesn't know. Yeah, chat, for what it's worth, uh, there is a lot about this Scars deck I don't know or don't understand. I think we've covered that. Scars of the World Legacy is such a cool card. It's such an interesting card. Looks like we're going to set a card... Was that discard block dragon to hand size? Oh, this might be over. Ooh! <laughs> nope! It was special summon block dragon by banishing my entire hand. Purple Nightfall at end step. Are we going to search another Avram? No, we're going to banish the Avram. And by putting the Avram back in a different zone, we'll be able to uh, summon that blue. And that should be the end of the game, I am pretty sure. Oh my god, it's forever. Wait, not only is it forever, it remembers the attack gain. The attack gain is tied to future glow, I think. Not to the individual monsters. Wow, I am noting the level. I am both noting the level and kneeling profusely. I hope you're aware, chat. A Girsu has made it on field and we are not but one game away. From Scars of the World Legacy making it into top 8 after an unreal Cinderella run. Wow, this is extremely frightening. I will tell you this. If there is one thing I have learned from this game, it is to note the level. Th this level has remained noted <laughs> for the entire turn. Uh, chat correctly identifying. No matter the situation, note the level of the banished monster. A second summon limit, perfect. That That's to out double Cosmic Cyclone. <laughs> and that's gonna be it. Time for game three. This is the least Yu-Gi-Oh I've ever had to cast. <laughs> Alright, so, um, chat, um, 
<clears throat> this is it's a very intense battle of the mind for game three. So I'm going to need in chat those of you supporting Gemini FDK to spam highlighted Solid Rocks Brother, and those of you uh, supporting uh, Scars of the World Legacy to spam in chat. Note its level. That's what I'm going to need to see. Uh, and then we'll we'll let chat decide who makes it into top eight. We don't even need to play out game three. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, we we could just, uh, from a democratic standpoint, determine uh, who is who is going to make it and who is not. Let me see if I can actually. Yeah, yeah, we should be able to do this. There you go. And right in the middle there while they're boarding. <laughs> I don't even know what you would board in. If you're the Scars player, you're obviously on stuff like Nibiru. If you're on the Gem Knight player, you've got 60 cards, so you're not going to see what you boarded anyway. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is, this is the most hype I've ever been about something this st stupid. <laughs> since the last time we had the Scars player on stream, honestly. Uh, since literally one ago. Alright, we have made it into the final match. And of course the Gemini Dad Emancipator player is going to be going first. Unexpected Die is a good one. That's a good start. Kind of a build your own rabbit here. All right, Tourmaline it is. And we're going to normal summon a Crystal Rose. I mean, this looks like it would be it. So did the uh, Mech Knight player draw any of their negation? Will it matter? All right, we're going to trigger the effect of Lapis and Graveyard, or uh, Lazuli, rather. We'll use Link Spider to summon that card out of our hand. Chat, count along with me. I believe that is four? That's four. That's five! Phantom Quartz is the fifth summon! And this is kind of crusty. Do you even Nibiru here? You'd wait, I think. How does he keep opening combo? It's just a couple of monsters. So this telegraphs a lot uh, for Rykape. His opponent didn't uh, impermanence the... Uh, Phantom Quartz didn't Ash Blossom the Phantom Quartz. The Fusion spell has made it to the hand. I think pretty much all you're scared of right now is Nibiru, maybe DD Crow. <laughs> Alright, uh, we are Fusion Summoning for Zirconia. That's a very odd one to be going into, but uh, I assume the Gem Knight player has a plan. Gonna banish three. We have hard draw on the block dragon. Uh, maybe we sent it there and I didn't pay attention. Well, the block dragon effect resolution will be a problem. Thinking here, wow, this is going into cross sheep, or really just to get the block dragon activation, but I believe, have they used their normal summon? They normal summoned crystal rose. They're going to have to get material for a fusion here if they want to continue, yeah, continue popping off, so they're only going to be able to go into one at emancipator. It's going to be seeker, or researcher, rather. I'm going to activate the grave effect of crystal rose here. And we'll activate Researcher now that we have a, a rock monster. We'll fire Researcher's effect. We found a Rose, an Analyzer, and I think Rose is the only target. Was that a normal as well? We could do that. Yeah, so we'll go for Crystal Rose. We'll activate one of the Crystal Rose's effects. Fun that this is not hard. Activate the other one to bin a copy of uh, Tourmaline and Lazuli to put that Tourmaline back in hand, I expect. <clears throat> wow, did the Mech Knight player open no hand traps? Oh, and Opelousa comes down miserable. 
Oh, that's got to be it. Well, just a cold calculated push to lethal at this point. We'll use Gem Knight Fusion. All right, here's Lapis Lazuli. That's going to trigger Obsidian. It's going to bring back this copy of uh, Lapis. And then I think we have the material in Graveyard to continue plusing. We'll go into uh, Phantom Quartz. Please have Hainawada. Well, there's there's a there's an Appaloosa on board. I don't think that's going to do what you want. Going to put the Shadal Fusion back in hand. Phantom Quartz is going to trigger. We can special summon a fusion monster from our extra deck using the material in the banished zone. And I'll give you one guess as to what that's going to be. Master Diamond it is. Lapis Lazuli comes down for 3k. Ouch. Master Diamond banishing Lapis Lazuli will uh, hit us for another 3. Youch. And we're going to put this uh, normal monster back in our hand. Link away for a uh, Verte Anaconda. Activate Verte Anaconda's effect, sending a D fusion. Oh, going for a Gemini fusion first, of course. For a Zirconia. All right, there's D fusion. Goodbye to the Zirconia. Hello to the Master Diamond. And in the graveyard, we've got a copy of Lapis. Master Diamond is going to banish the Lapis and then try to activate her effect. If you have an impermanence, this is the time to use it. Oh! What a... miserable way for this game to end. Oh, my. Oh. That took 10 years off of my life, chat. Well, with that, one Ad Emancipator variant has made it into Top Cut. Of course, it's a variant that plays very little Ad Emancipator and a lot of Gem Knights, despite the fact that it was included in the pie chart as Ad Emancipator, uh, to the chagrin of all the people playing it. Um, shouts out to, uh, uh, shouts out to Yakuman, uh, regardless, just an unbelievable run with an extremely interesting deck. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, it as it's tuned in the following weeks. I certainly hope uh, that it gets better and are able to uh, flex into multiple hand traps. Um, Chad, you just, you didn't note the level. That's all I got to say about it. I